Candia with Candia Hainsworth Designs and I am in the official classroom for the Sew It and Show workshops. Today's tutorial is an in the hoop machine embroidery design. We are going to be doing a bib. This embroidery design was purchased at digistitches.com and I will put the link below. For this project you will need a 7x12 or an 8x14 embroidery hoop. At least if you are planning to put this on an infant. And you will also need two pieces of fabric, one for your front, one for your back, a piece of batting, and stabilizer. Okay, so first you're going to start with your uh, stabilizer. I like to have some uh, adhesive spray, so I just lightly uh, spritz it like that, and then I'm going to lay my batting. Okay, now this um, overall finished uh, bib is going to be, uh, well, if... It's, if the uh, hoop size is going to be 8 by 14, then ideally your bib is going to be a little bit shorter than that. Okay? So it depends on what hoop that you're using. So I don't want to say that it's going to finish at one size and it doesn't depending on what hoop you have. But ideally you want to lay your uh, stabilizer down, then place your batting, and then you want to take one of the fabrics that you're going to be using, spritz it again, the batting that is very lightly, and then place your fabric on top like so, right? And then you want to just kind of, you know, spread it out like so to make sure that all those three layers are sticking together take your embroidery hoop the bottom frame and then place all three layers of fabric on top and then place your embroidery hoop like so right and then you might have to loosen it just some but just make sure that you know your fabric and all three layers are nicely tucked snug in there and then if you have to just tighten it some Okay, and even if you have to take some of your uh, fabric and just kind of tug on it a little bit just so it has a tighter fit inside that hoop, that's what you want to do. Okay, and I'm just going to make sure both sides are nice and tugged, and now we take it to the machine. Okay, so I've already uploaded my embroidery design from my computer to the, the embroidery machine. And uh, basically, when you are adding a name, you kind of got to do this a little bit backwards, and I'll show you why. So the first step is going to uh, trace out a uh, the outline of the, um, the, the bib, right? And then the next frame is going to do the design, which is the stippling in this case. For that embroidery design, you actually get three different designs. You get a blank. You get a, a quilt stippling, and then you get almost like a, a stripe piping kind of um, design that um, uh, Digi Stitches have added to this embroidery design. And then the next frame is going to give you your two positionings for your snaps or your Velcro, for your closure, so to speak. And then the last frame is going to be the tack down frame for the back of the hoop. However, if you are adding embroidery, you cannot do this part at this point. And you will see what I mean. So we're gonna go all the way back because I'm going to be adding personalization to this order. So we're going to go back to where the uh, first frame is. The machine is already loaded with the embroidery hoop and the fabric that we have done in the previous uh, clip. And now all I'm going to do is just start with that particular part of tacking the outline of the bib down. And then next is going to start with the, uh, the stippling of this design. And it's 
gives a nice quilting finish. And now this frame is going to be a put, a placing the positioning for the snaps or the Velcro. And then you want to stop your machine after it makes the second position for your snap or your Velcro because you have to uh, tell the machine that you want to do embroidery at this point or personalization. So I'm going to stop my machine and prevent it from going to the next frame because the next frame, it would, um, it would take it to the, um, the, the area where I showed you before where it was going to be opening with the closure and we don't want it to do that. Okay, so I'm going to press the lock button and then I am actually going to go back into this design and to do that I'm simply going to go here and then take the frames all the way back. Then I'm going to just keep going back so I can go to the personalization part of it. So it is finishing the last letter for the personalization. And remember, we have to go back onto the uh, the third stage of the uh, in the hoop bib, and we have to. Uh, tell the machine that uh, we would like to put the back on because the and design doesn't know that you want to add personalization and so forth so it's designed for uh, to do those four steps first you're going to do your tack down stitch then you'll do your stippling then you'll do your uh, positioning of the holes and snaps and then it is programmed to do the final tack down of the back so if you want to do your personalization you have to stop the machine at the third step do your personalization and then go back so that's what I'm going to do right now I'm going to uh, position a machine so we are putting our um, back on so the back goes on right side down now I generally will slide it right on to the uh, the hoop without actually even taking it off some people like to take it off um, I actually will take it off for you so you can see it because it's not really hard but I'm just in the habit and let me just pull the camera back so you can see what I'm doing okay so the personalization is done and now I'm just going to take the fabric and put it right side right side to right side so that's what I mean by right side right sides down so this is the back of the fabric and I'm going to make sure that it is covering the entire areas okay like so and then I'm just going to slide the hoop back onto the machine and then tell the machine to uh, continue and so now the machine will do its final uh, tack down stitch of the uh, back side of the fabric and then I will take it off and trim it add the tag close the, sew the closure by sewing it closed. Now you can actually hand sew the closure or you can machine sew. In my case I will be machine sewing and that's it.
And so it does the uh, final tack down stitch of the um, the back side of the um, the bib twice, and I do like that because when you're turning it inside out, um, you know it could separate. So it doesn't do that because the way this embroidery design is made, you have that extra security with the uh, the last final tack down stitch. And so it's coming down to uh, the final stitching. And then I will uh, take it off the hoop and um, then trim around and turn it right sides out. Okay, so the embroidery design is done. And I'm just going to take it off of the machine here. And then uh, just separate the hoop. Okay, so... You know, you just take it off the hoop like so. And I'm just going to trim it right here in front of you instead of taking it to the uh, the table. Because you are an embroidery person, so you get it. Okay, so you see the outline of the bib, okay? And then here's where your, your opening is going to be. So you're going to just trim as close as possible, okay? all along here very close to the stitch line but you are not going to cross that stitch line with those scissors otherwise you will have a problem and unless you really know how to sew you will not have a way of um correcting the problem so you can uh you know when i first started doing the in the hoop i didn't go too close i would start like this you know cut all the big pieces out and then I will go back and then uh, cut it very, um, very closely with a, um, a finer scissors. Okay, so you can do that um, just to kind of get all this big bulk stuff out of your way. I mean, it saves time if you do it right the first time. But, you know, to each its own. And if this is your first time or your first experiences with these in the hoop, you want to... Do whatever you can to avoid problems. So for me, this is the way I started out. I would uh, just cut out the outline. Now, when you get to that opening, I would, you see how I'm, you know, re-angling my scissors? Even though your opening, uh, when you stuff it inside, is not going to be that, that much, but you just don't want to cut too less, okay? So now I got the majority of the bulk out. And... See how it looks like a bib? So now you're just going to take your scissors and trim very closely all the way around that stitch line. Okay, but when you get to that opening, you want to leave like a little lip out. Okay, so you can turn it inside and close it. And then you want to, you know, cut all the way around here. And once again, very close to the stitch line, but not across the stitch line. So I'm still cutting very carefully around that neckline. But I'm not crossing that stitch line. Okay, so next I'm going to uh, turn this, excuse me, inside out. Okay, and to do that, you want to find your opening and just kind of, I say, start with this part first. Just kind of, you know what I mean? And not too rough because you don't want to rip it either. Okay. And then take it and just kind of tuck it and turn it out like so. And because you know you have used some stabilizers, it's going to give a little bit of resistance, but that's okay. You'll get it out. Just work it out. Okay. And then this part, you want to just kind of reach in there and just kind of pull it. But you're not going to do it too hard. And then you can actually put your hand inside of the opening and just kind of help it out a little bit. But not too much. Just, just work it back and forth and stick your finger in there and just kind of pull it on out it'll come out 
And remember, you're going to press this at the end of it. So don't worry about the fact that it's looking wrinkled and so forth. You are disrupting it at this point, so it's going to be wrinkled. So I'm just going to see. It comes. It, it comes out. You just have to uh, just play with it a little bit. It's coming out. And then what I like to do, especially when it's at that last stubborn part, just grab, reach in there with your finger and just kind of pull it out. Right? And then when you're at that last part, turn it over, press it straight, and then stick your finger in the opening and get inside of those corners. So I'm going to... Uh, reach up in there and you can use actually a chopstick or something or a, a, a pencil a pencil eraser head you know just to get into that corner but don't use scissors because you'll poke it right on through okay and so it's going to look like this so far so it's cute right see that and then you have that opening so you want to just kind of piece it inside like so. And then, you know, I like to put my tags on everything. And so this is the time that I would grab my tag and um, I would just um, fold it and put it inside. Okay, so I got my tag. I'm just going to fold it. And you've seen me put these tags on before, so it's no big deal. But I just want to show you, I just want to make sure that all those little pieces for that opening is in there. I'm going to just slide my tag in there as well. And then I'm going to use a clip. I find the clips are better to use when you are putting your tags in opposed to the, the pins. Because it holds it a little bit better. So I want to put a clip. <clears throat> excuse me, I'm sorry. It's, I'm going to put a clip right there and a clip right there. Okay. Just like that. And then I'm going to take it to the sewing machine and just sew it close. I'm going to use either maybe pink or white thread. And then you want to either put snaps here or you could put Velcro. You can um, stitch little Velcro. You know, the, the male and the female. Um, you know, I like to put little flowers and stuff on my closures. And so I guess I'll be doing a tutorial for that because I know someone will ask me like, you know, how do I do the flowers? And, um, or you can, um, Google on YouTube. There's plenty of, um, plenty of, um, tutorials. I don't know. I think I'm coming down with a cold or something. I feel kind of, not really a cold, but I feel kind of cloggy or something. I don't know. I don't feel sick. I just feel like a cloggy. I don't know. Anyway. <clears throat> I'm going to take this to the ironing board and press this nice and um, flat and, and crease and nice and clean. And then I am going to, um, no, first I'm going to stitch this close and then I'm going to take it to the ironing board. Okay, so once again, these were made in the hoop, and that means that this entire bib was made in the hoop, embroidery and all, except that I had to add my tag and close it up. But and here's the finished product. I am super pleased the way this set came out. Once again, all of the fabrics can be found at Walmart. This is the Waverly Inspiration brand. And they carry them in bulks and they also carry them in fat quarters. And if you want to learn how to make this adorable fabric flower, the tutorial is below. If you want to learn how to make the ruffle, the tutorial is below as well as attach the ruffle to the in the hoop bib. The tutorial is below. If you want to purchase this in the hoop bib, you can find it at digistitches.com and the font can be found at planetapplique.com. It is called the Lucy font and this font is called Black Chancery font found at Jolson's Designs and this font is also called Hopscotch font found at Jolson's Designs as well. And all these links are going to be posted below. Please join me on Facebook at embroidery boss group or like this channel you know what come back give me a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel tell your friends and thank you so much for joining in and guess what i'll see you next time